Welcome to the how-to video on the Argus feature. Hi, my name is Ian. I am the lead communications tester in the UR validation team. Today, I will show you how to configure Routable Goose with two relays, three Ethernet switches, and one Cisco router. Now let's get started. This diagram shows the wiring required between the UR relay the Ethernet switches, and the Cisco router. First I will describe the port 1. When here we have a local area network address for UR1 of 10.14.27.50. And then in, within the same network, Relay 2 has got an address 10.14.27.51. Through these two ports, we connect URPC, and from there we uh, configure the offline files, send them to the online relay, and look for our actual values from the URPC program. And port 2 is where we were going to be transmitting the Argus messages. The UR relay allows us to transmit Goose messages across any one of its CPU ports, individually or in combinations. So for this demonstration, we were only going to use port 2, and I configure a test IP of 192.168.150 on UR1, and on UR2, an address of 192.168.251. Now these two addresses do need to be on different networks, since we are going to be sending a routable goose through the Cisco router. Port 2 of UR1 connected to an Ethernet switch, and that Ethernet switch is then connected to port 00 of the Cisco router. Then from the port 01 of the Cisco router, we connect to another Ethernet switch, and then that switch connects to port 2 on UR2. Our configuration computer is also, ha also has a serial connection that allows us to enter the configuration into the Cisco router. In order to pass the Argus messages from the one dot network in UR1 to the two dot network in UR2, we will have to configure our router. So I'll briefly show you some of the commands ne necessary to complete that configuration. So I have a serial terminal emulation program here that will allow me to communicate with the Cisco router. And start with the router prompt. And for this particular router, I'm going to have to enable it to get to the executable level, executable level. Now that I'm at the X. Now that I'm at the executive level, I can make the necessary changes. So first, if you are not familiar with your router, you may want to find out what addresses are programmed into the interfaces. You can use this command to briefly see the addresses that are configured on the interfaces. On this router, I only want to use the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1. I have already configured the necessary addresses, 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.2.2. Now, if you're not familiar with that process, I can briefly show you how you can configure them. Do a configure terminal command. So now in the configuration level, we want to configure a particular interface. Interface. Now we are in the Gigabit Ethernet 0 0.0 interface. And in order to set the IP address, and IP address 
We enter the IP that we want to use with the mask. And then enter. And then this particular router, we want to uh, make sure the interface is always running. So we're going to have no shutdown. And that, those two commands will get your interface IP configured. We can end this, escape out. They repeat the same process to configure the gigabit ethernet zero slash one. And in that case, you would just use the IP address for the two dot network. Now that your interfaces are configured, there are a few other commands you'll need to enter in order to get the multicasting running properly. I need to do the configure terminal again. Back into the configuration mode. And one feature you need to enable, you need to have IP multicast routing. So the command IP multicast routing, that will enable the IP multicasting I, this will enable the IP multicasting for this router. And that is a global command for the entire router, so that doesn't need any particular interface. And now we need to configure the particular interfaces for the type of protocol independent multicasting command. So once again, we'll have to select an interface. So the interface. Once we're into that interface, it's an IP command, protocol independent multicasting. And this, since this is only a demonstration, it doesn't really matter what kind of switch we put on this. So I'm just going to pick a sparse dense mode and enter that. Now on this interface we'll also need to enable the IGMP. Now the IGMP is required in order for the router to know what multicast groups exists in each of these networks on each of the interfaces. So we need so we need to enable the IP IGMP version three. And that completes the configuration for the interface. So we can exit. And then you would once again repeat those commands for the gigabit ethernet interface zero slash one with the same PIM smart stents mode, IGMP version three. One last command you will need. Since we have a source specific Argus message, you need to define the source specific range. The simplest way to do this on this particular router just to use the default SSM default range. Now this will be all of the 232.0.0.0 addresses. So basically any multicast address that's starting with 232 will be considered part of the source specific multicast. Once you've completed these steps, you will need to copy the running configuration into your startup configuration, just in case your router gets restarted.
Once you've completed these steps, you will need to copy your running configuration, everything that you've just configured, into the startup configuration in case your router should get rebooted or power cycled any time during your test. I'm going to leave the configuration. Go copy to We will just use the default file name and complete. Now, if at any point you want to check to see if your settings are correct, you can use the show command. You can show running config or even, if you wish, the startup configuration. And that would complete the configurations necessary for this Cisco router. Next, we will configure the relays for this demonstration using the UR setup configuration tool. Within this tool, we have created a site which we call Markham. Within that site, we have populated it with the two relays, UR1 and UR2. To configure these relays, we will go to the offline window We already have a couple of files ready to go, and in UR1, our transmission relay, we will look at the configuration of the IC61850 screen. Within this screen, we have all the information necessary to configure the various IEC61 features in the relay. For our demonstration, we will go to the server configuration settings. You can populate the IED name, UR1, and then go to the data sets. And within the data sets, we will create the items that we want to transmit. Now, in these data sets, we are going to include some analog items. So we will use the TT3 slow data set. And you can see here, I've already configured various items. By expanding the menu tree at the bottom of the screen, you can access the various attributes and then drag them into the screen above. So I have populated it with four contact inputs, the phase IOC1 general operation, the time of the phase IOC operate, and then two analog items, the metering values for the voltage phase A and the metering values for current phase A, both from MMXU1. And once the data set has been configured, you can go to the Goose menu, go to the TX Goose, select TX Goose 1, and in here I've selected the mode, our Goose. I have left the default values for the control block name and the ID. And in the data set, I have expanded it and selected the data set that we saw just now, TT3, data set 1, select that. For Argus messages, the destination MAC address is not settable. It's done automatically, so you don't need to configure that. Now this next item is particularly important. In the UR relay, the default value for the VLAN priority when it first opens up is 4. But since I've already set this particular TX Goose, I have changed it to the value of zero. This is necessary in order to get the TX Goose to transmit and receive properly. So always remember to set your VLAN priority to zero for the Argus messages. Now the rest of these attributes can be set as you require. Configuration revisions, retransmission times, time to live, and update times. I have decreased the update time just so that it would be quicker to see the messages transmitted. And in this setting, the port assignment, you can select which ports or port you want the TX Goose message to be sent on. And from the menu, you can see we 
can disable it if you want to, choose individual ports, or choose combinations of ports. For this demonstration, as shown in our previous diagram, I have chosen port 2. And these last two attributes are specific to Argus messages. The first is the Argus IP class. Now this value is used within the Cisco router to determine priorities of how various messages are uh, routed. And 46 is our default value, and for this demonstration there's uh, absolutely no need to change it, so you can leave it at the de default value of 46. And lastly, we have the destination IP address for the Argus message. Now within the IP standard, there are various addresses that are used for multicast messages. And a subset of those addresses are used for source-specific multicasting. And those would be addresses that start with the first octet of 232. So for this Argus message, which is an SSM message, I have chosen the first octet of 232 and then just populated the next three octets with numbers 1, 2, and 3 for our demonstration purposes. So this Argus 1 is our SSM message. And that would complete the configuration of this TX Goose. And I've also got TX Goose 2 configured. And in this one, I was going to show ASM. The only settings you need to change for the ASM messages is the destination IP address. In this case, we're choosing the first octet value to be within the multicast range defined by the standard, but not the 232. In this case, I've chosen the first octet of 225 and then populated the next three octets with 4, 5, and 6 for our demonstration purposes. Therefore, we have two R Goose messages being transmitted. TX Goose 1 is R Goose SSM. And TX Goose 2 is Argus ASM. Now that the Argus messages have been configured for transmission, we can close this TX Goose screen. But since we have analog values in this data set, we have one last step that you need to do in order for those analog values to be updated correctly in the messages, and that is to set the dead band values. So within the system setup, signal sources, source 1, because our analog values come from MMXU1, the source 1 dead bands. And here you can see I have set the dead band values for the voltage phase A and the dead band values for phase A current. Once you've set the dead bands, you can close this screen, and that will complete the configuration of UR1 for the transmission. Next, we'll show how to configure UR2 to receive the Argus messages. From the offline file for UR2, we'll expand it select the IEC 621850 screen and open. Now from this screen we will once again configure the server configuration which has already been done. I name it UR2 for the IED name. there we'll go to the goose screen to the RX goose and we'll go to the RX goose boolean inputs now from this screen the bottom portion is currently blank this will show the imported IEDs now the best way to configure goose reception is through the use of the CID from the transmitting relay in this case UR1 so we want to select Add IED. 
and then select the CID from the UR1. Choose the IED, since there's only one in this CID file, select the UR1. And now we have populated the goose messages from the UR1 relay. And this, since this is the Boolean screen, we will only see the Boolean items that are in these transmitted messages. So let's take contact input 1 from the first goose message, contact input 2 from the second one, and then what I'd like to do is from the second goose, the ASM, take the third and the fourth and then go back to the first our goose messages which was the SSM and select the binary item for the phase IOC operate. Now you can see how the five items are now configured that would complete the configuration of the boolean inputs and for the two analog items you'll select the RX Goose analog inputs and we can see that we have the two messages appearing again and each of these messages contains the same two analogs and then if, for the analogs we will only just For the analogs, we will only use Argus 1. I will just drag these two to the top screen for RX Goose Analog 1 and 2. Now that we have completed this, we'll go back and check the Argus messages. Now, the dragging and dropping of the items the RX Boolean and the RX Analog will have automatically populated the information in the RX Goose screens. So we have the RX Goose, we have the Goose ID, the E-Type App ID, Control Block Reference, Data Set Names, Configuration Revisions, the Reception Mode, Source IP, that's the IP address of the port that was transmitting the Argus message, the destination IP, and whether any security is being used. Now you may have noticed that the source IP address was not correct. This is the source IP address from the first port of the main CPU, whereas we're using port 2. Now. The UR cannot distinguish which port was actually being used to transmit the message, so it is necessary to go back in here and change this, since the URPC will automatically choose port 1 as the default. So we need to go back in here and change the source IP to the IP address of port 2. Now, we are matching with the source IP from UR1 that transmitted our Goose 1. Now, in the second our Goose that we're receiving, the ASM message, you can see once again that this is defaulted to the IP address of port 1 on the main CPU, but we don't need to change this because this is an ASM message. ASM standing for any source, meaning that this address will not be checked, will not be required in order for the message to be received. So now we can collapse these screens and save.
Once they've been saved, we can close the screen. We go back over to the offline window, and you'll notice now that there is a small warning triangle displayed beside the offline file for ER2. And if you hover over it, you have a message, SC fi SCL files out of spec, right click and run update SCL files to sync. This just indicates the fact that values have been saved that require the offline file to be updated. So we right click on that offline file, select the update SCL files, And that would complete the configuration for the reception goose in UR2. As the last step to configuring UR2, I'll briefly show you how to configure the enunciator so we can display the incoming Argus messages. So from the offline UR2 file, select the product setup. Within the product setup, there's the graphical front panel. And within the graphical front panel is the enunciator editor. So open this screen. Now within this screen, we have a basic layout that is three by four, indicating that there are going to be three rows of four columns. And in here, you can add a name for any particular pages that are created. I'm only using one page, and I just labeled it Argus Inputs. So the indicators. For indicator 1, I have chosen an actual. There's a pull-down menu of three different choices, actual, alarm, and mixed. And since I want to display the analog goose in this particular indicator, I have had to choose actual. The actual will gray out portions that you don't require. And I put text in lines two and three for the Argus SSM phase A voltage. I repeated this for indicator two for the phase A current. I decided to leave three and four blank, so that would complete the first row. And in the second row, I have populated the contact inputs. These are considered alarms, so the alarm content is selected. Within the alarm input, I have a pull down of all the binary operands available within the UR. So it's a very large pull down list for whichever ones you want to use. Since I want to display the Argus Boolean values, I have selected RxG, standing for Rx Goose, for Reception Goose, Boolean 1 on. And I've repeated it for 2, 3, and 4. This would represent the contact inputs being received, contact inputs 1 and 2 from the SSM Argus message, contacts 3 and 4, Argus Booleans 3 and 4 from the ASM message. That completes the second row. and the third row, I've only shown the one item, the Rx Boolean 5, from the SSM message to indicate the phase IOC operate. Now that UR2 offline file has been completely configured, we can collapse that down. 
and now we will write the offline files to our active relays. So there's two methods by which you can write your offline file to the active relay. One method is to right click and then select write settings to device. From this tree item you can select the relay you want to send this file to, in this case UR1, and we'll send. We're given a warning message, are you sure you want to send this settings file to this device? We're sure. Once the offline file has been sent, UR setup will display the following screen. And if you wish to display the log from the particular relay the settings file was sent to, you can select yes. And within this log, you will see various entries. Now these are previous settings files that were sent, listed chronologically. And since we're only interested in the last one that we sent, we will focus just on the last entry. The entry starts with an information line, which shows you the three IP addresses of the device that it was sent to, some information about the versions, SEL file versions. Now the lines that we are interested in here that refer specifically to the Argus, Argus messaging, and this line here, because we are only transmitting from UR1, there is no indication of external reference elements or UR Since UR1 is only being used to transmit messages, there are no external reference elements and there are no Goose or R Goose messages being subscribed to. And then the next two lines show the two messages that have been configured. Describe it as an Argus, control block reference, logical node master, and the IED name. And once again for the second one. There's a few other items in this configuration. There are a couple more items in this log that indicate the number of data items in the data set that are being scanned quickly, as we call the fast scan, which is every protection pass cycle. And another entry here shows the number of items that are on the slow, slow scan list. And another entry here which shows the number of items on the slow scan list which is done at every 100 milliseconds. A couple of information lines to indicate that the files were successfully saved and imported. That would complete the configuration and file transmission for UR1. For UR2, we can use the same method or if you like, you can expand your online device, UR2. Select with your mouse the UR2 offline file, then drag it up, and then release. You're given the same messages as if you had done the right click. And do you want to save the save? Are you sure you want to save the settings files to this device? Yes, we are and the file is sent. Once again, we get the message showing that the settings were successful, asking if we want to see the log. Once again, we'll say yes. Now, we will once again look for the last entry in the list. And this time I'll focus specifically on the difference between the transmission and reception. Now, because UR2 
is the reception relay. You will see a value displayed here. The number of external reference elements being seven. That would be the number of items that we have configured in the Boolean and analog. And the number of successful goose slash argoose subscriptions. And then we have zero slash two. We have not subscribed to any goose messages, but we have subscribed to two argoose messages. So zero for the goose, two for the argoose. Now that would complete the file configuration and transmissions for both UR1 and UR2. And now we can see the results. Now that we have written the offline files to the relays, we need to check the status of our Goose messages. So first, I'll go to the UR2, which is receiving the Argoose message. And in actual values, we will check the Arx Goose status. This screen will tell us whether or not the messages are being received. Now on this screen, we can see that all the messages are online. And then we can see the two messages that we configured showing up as online. So our messages are being properly received. Now we can check the status of some of the contact inputs. We can go to UR1 and look at the actual values of the contact inputs that are being sent. And compare that to the actual values that are being received on UR2 in the RX Goose Boolean. Now, from the RTT unit, I will simulate a contact input closing on UR1 and watch for the reception of that input on the Arx Goose Boolean 1. There we see a successful transmission, and we can also see that on the UR's HMI annunciator panel, where the Argus SSM contact input 1 has turned on. Now we'll proceed with the second one. Contact input two is turned on. And those two were actually being sent from the source specific or SSM Argus. And the next two, contact inputs three and four, which are being transmitted on the ASM message. There's contact three being turned on and received. And contact four being turned on and also being received. Therefore, all of our Boolean inputs are being transmitted and received correctly. Now we will take a look at the current and voltage values that are being transmitted and received. In this case, I will only open the analog inputs, the RX Goose analog inputs on UR2. Currently there are zero because there's no values being injected. And at the same time, we can also be watching the HMI screen for the SSM phase A voltage and phase A current. And now we'll check the voltage and current to see how they are updating in our uh, receiving relay. First, I will increase the voltage level. And we can see that being displayed in the URPC analog one or on our HMI as the Argus SSM phase A voltage. I will just turn that right up. And now I will increase the current. This is being displayed in the RX Goose analog too.
And now that I've exceeded the threshold value of 1 amp, you can also notice that the Boolean value, 5, which represents the phase IOC trip on the transmitting UR1 relay, and it's also being displayed on the HMI as the Argus SSM phase IOC1 operate. Now, if your Argus message is not being received properly, I will show you some helpful diagnostics that are available on the Relay's web page. You could open a browser and enter the IP address of the Relay. And here's the main menu of our Relay's web pages. And you will select the first item, the IEC 61850 information menu edition 2. Select that and in this case the first entry is the Argus statistics. Now this web page is coming from the UR1 which is the transmission relay. So in here you can see that it's transmitting two Argus messages. Here are the two messages and I'll show you some basic configurations. The destini destination IP, the control block reference, whether or not there's any security, and the number of packets that have actually been transmitted from the relay. Now in this instance, everything is working properly, so all these values are correct. Now if you're sure that your relay is transmitting properly, you can check on the reception side to see if there's any problems on the reception relay. Once again, you'll enter the IP address of the relay that's receiving. the same 62850 information menu and you can open the Argus statistics again and now you'll see since this is the UR2 reception relay the number of messages that are being received which is two and then the details of the two messages below destination IP, source IP, the goose control buck reference, the mode SSM in this case for the first Argus one uh, there's an IGMP status, some security entries, and the number of packets that have been received on the relay. And then for Argus 2, the same basic information, and in here you can see that in this case it was an ASM message that it's being received. Now this page shows you the routable portion of the Goose message, and if you have checked this part and found no reason to believe there is a problem, then you can also go back and check in the actual Goose diagnostics itself. So this would be down into the traditional Goose level. You can select on that page and now at the top here we have a reason code. These are the various error codes that uh, can be displayed on this web page. And below that are the two messages that are being received. You can see the details on the control blocks, um, MAC addresses, ether types, app IDs, all the information that's being received is detailed here. Sequence numbers are incrementing and state numbers are incrementing. You see time allowed to live. You can see number of successful receptions. And at the bottom here, if there was a problem, you have a reason code. Now when the message is being received correctly, you will see the hex 400. 0400. Now this, if you check the reason code at the top, refers to sequence number changed, which is what would happen if your message is being properly received. So a properly received message, you'll always see this reason code. And then below that we have the second message, which is basically the same information. So if you're having any problems, these are the three pages that you'll definitely want to check to see if you can figure out why you have a problem. In this video, we learned how to configure a router and UR relays for the routable goose. In closing, there are a few items you need to remember when working with this feature. First, the SSM address range is a specific subset of the multicast address range. Next, the VLAN priority in the TX portion of the RX goose should be set to zero. And finally, after configuring the Argus reception, 
Remember to check the source IP setting in the Argus message. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and that you'll be able to use this to configure your next Argus message.